So today we're absolutely delighted to be joined by Andy Kirk, the rugby player for the Leeds Rhinos. Andy, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks, Cyrus. Good to uh, good to join you today. Fantastic, Andy. Now, Andy, give us a little insight. You're a rugby player. You're a Christian as well, which our viewers will find very interesting. First of all, give us an insight into rugby. It seems like a very physical sport. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, I mean, I started playing rugby league when I was six years old. Um, my dad played, my granddad played, and my uncle also played. Um, I've got a brother that's a year older, so we both started playing around the same age. We were about six years old. And was just playing for the local clubs um, where we lived in Leeds. And just, just really loved it. And it was just uh, part of growing up. Uh, made loads of friends um, and just really enjoyed it and just progressed from there into my sort of early teens uh, and just found that um, I, I excelled um, at all sports um, to be honest and I remember at school I, I just wanted to play just do PE all day um, I wasn't bothered about the lessons fortunately I was quite academic as well but um, I, I, if I'd have been given a choice I would have just I'd have just loved to have played PE all day, uh, <laughs> loved all different sports. So, so At yeah. At what stage, Andy, did you become a turn it professional and think, I'm going to actually have this as my, my career and my future? Yeah, I would say we got to the age of about 10, 11. And, and, I, and, and I think at that point, you know, I thought, you know, this is, this would be fantastic if, if I could become a professional player and, um, you know, and, and make a make a career and a living out of playing rugby. But I signed at Leeds Rhinos when I was 15 years old. Um, they signed me, and I went through their their academy system uh, into the second team, and then eventually uh, into their first team squad around about the age of 17, 18. Um, and then and then it just progressed from there. I, I, I started to play a few more first team games at Leeds Rhinos. I never, unfortunately, I never became a regular uh, established uh, first team player at Leeds, and I had to move to uh, a club called Salford, Salford City Reds, based in Manchester. Um, I went on loan for a season, and then I signed for them. I signed a two-year contract for them after that, uh, and at this, I'm about 20, 21 now. Um, and then just throughout my career, I played for six different clubs. Um, I moved to Wakefield. Uh, Halifax. I played for Witness Vikings, and I finished my career at Featherstone Rovers. I actually retired quite early. I was 27 years old when I retired, so that's seven years ago now. Um, but yeah, I loved the game. Loved what was your it. What was your initial reaction from from obviously being involved in PE and you love playing sports and you love playing rugby, and then all of a sudden at the age of 15 you're signed by the Leeds Rhinos? What was going through your mind at that time? Oh, it, Cyrus! It was just—it was just a dream come true for me, and then, and although I, that's that's what I wanted to do, it was just—it was my hometown club. It was the club that I'd supported as a kid, um, and to be honest, I just—I just couldn't even dream that Leeds Rhinos would want to sign me. Um, so yeah, and, I, and that as as a as a as a young lad, as a teenager, I was quite—I was quite shy. Um, I wasn't very confident socially. Um, and but obviously that developed as um, you know as I started to play rugby at, at that level and mix and mix with the the other lads and other people. Uh, but yeah, it was just a dream come true for me to sign for my hometown club, Leeds Rhinos. So Andy, tell me, take me a little bit back and tell me about your journey with Christ. Where did that begin for you? Yeah, interestingly enough, I, I, my parents weren't Christian. They never took, took me to church. Or spoke to me about Jesus or the Bible, um, but I remember from a very young age, I always had a sense of belief that that there was a, a higher being, and I always believed in God. I remember from a really young age, probably about eight or nine, kneeling at my bed and praying. Um, but obviously, with what I know now, and I know what what the what the Bible says and what Scripture says about you know you were chosen before you were born, and that totally makes sense to me now because nobody had ever taught me about God. But I just had that sense that he was there, he loved me, he was for me. Um, but yeah, I got at the age of about 18 when I played at Leeds Rhinos, I met a, a guy named Tommy Smales, he was a physio. Um, and he didn't he didn't stay long at Leeds, he left, but 
uh, I connected with him and stayed in contact with him and um, he actually ran a pub um, near Leeds and he had a treatment room upstairs in his pub so he used to do treatments from his from up from upstairs in the pub and I I used to go see him every week um, for either sports massage or if I got an injury he would treat my injuries uh, and he was so good at what he did um, and he was a Christian and he, he started to speak to me about Jesus he started to speak to me about scriptures um, and he would relate to my rugby he'd relate to my just dressing room and it, and, it, and it made sense everything that I said it it sort of made sense up to that point I didn't have no reference for God in terms of um, Jesus Christ being being his son um, and anything to do with the Bible so that's where it came about but I mean for me uh, it took me a long time before I actually got born again and invited Jesus into my heart at the age of 27 when I did that and I can honestly say it's the best thing I, I ever did in my life and, and my life has changed massively and, and I've changed massively as a person from from being born again and when I invited Jesus Christ into my heart and it's yeah it's just so powerful and it's it's uh, it's changed me from the inside. Excellent, that's lovely, Andy. Um, give us an insight of what was what were the transition. Tell us a little bit in detail the transition between the time you were eighteen till the time you actually came close to Christ at the age of twenty seven. What happened in between there? Well, I was living my life, you know, as a professional rugby league player. Um, but to be honest, when I look back, I can see how sort of selfish, self centered. Um, you know, I didn't really care much about for other people. I was more more focused just on me um, and what I wanted to get out of my life and what I wanted to do. Um, I actually started uh, watching pornography at 11 years old um, when I found my dad's um, stash of VHS videos. Um, I started watching pornography from the age of 11 um, and I found, I found, I felt that I felt drawn to go back and watch this material again and again um, and, and search for more explicit material um, till probably not realising it at the time but by the time I got into my late teens, early 20s I was addicted to pornography. So I first started viewing pornography when I was 11 years old. Uh, I found my dad's stash of VHS videos under his bed um, just as a curious young 11 year old boy I was just searching around and found these videos uh, and I started to watch them well I just thought you know it was a great way I was I thought I was learning about sex and um, I thought oh, you know this is fantastic um, when actually that was you know far far from the truth um, I felt an urge when I started to watch the videos to go back and watch them again um, and when my parents were out I would go back and I would start to watch the videos again but I would also start to search for you know, more explicit videos, different material, to the point where by the time I got into my late teens, early 20s, I was probably watching pornography as, as frequently as every day. All my friends watched it, um, you know, they talked about it, so it was just a normal part of, of, of growing up. In fact, I remember a, a time when um, I, was, I played professional rugby league um, for 12 years and a club that I was at at the time one of the players brought in a, a pornography DVD uh, in the players lounge I put it on and all the lads sat around and watched it um, and obviously that was how that was just how normal pornography was perceived in that sort of environment um, so like I say, I was in my in my early tw early to mid twenties. I, I definitely became addicted to pornography. Uh, the unfortunate thing was that I didn't I didn't realise it, and it really started to affect my behaviour in terms of uh, my relationships. I found it very difficult to keep a, a regular girlfriend. Um, I became very promiscuous, um, and just how pornography um, how it makes you objectify the opposite sex, and you start to look at the op opposite sex as just um, an object rather than a, a real person with feelings and emotions and obviously that's that's very a very un, unhealthy um, way and a, a very unhealthy mindset that you have towards the opposite sex. Um, I, I definitely felt um, feelings of loneliness and depression 
and it affected my social life where I would rather be at home watching pornography than going out socialising with friends. Um, so it really affected my life um, it, to that extent. Uh, when, I, when I got to the age of 27, I had what I would call a, a spiritual awakening, when I invited Jesus Christ into my heart. And um, I really felt that that, that had a massive impact, uh, definitely porno with the pornography. And God just started to show me how the pornography was affecting my life, how it was affecting my relationships, how it was affecting my behaviour, uh, and how harmful it was. So when I decided to stop, it was quite a big shock because I found that I couldn't. I couldn't stop watching pornography, which was very difficult for, for me to take because as a professional rugby league player, I was very disciplined with everything in my life. I was very disciplined with my diet, with my training. I was very focused. If I felt that, I felt that if I put my mind to anything that I could do it. But this one thing, pornography, I couldn't stop watching pornography. So just some, pri in some private time on my own, I just, just talking to God, I just, I just said to God, God, I can't stop watching pornography. I've, I've tried so hard. I've tried so hard in my own strength and my own ability to stop watching pornography and I can't stop. I need you to help me. And it was just as simple as that, just, just, just as honest and as open as that with God. And, and from that moment on, I never watched pornography again. Temptation was always there, even after I stopped watching pornography. We live in a very sexualized world where you only have to switch on MTV and you can see vid music videos on there that have got material in it that 20, 30 years ago would have been X-rated um, material. Um, so temptation will always be there, but I just have no desire to go back to that old life um, that, I, that I know now, looking back, was a very miserable life, a very lonely, isolated life. Uh, and I understand there's other ways as well that people can get free from, from any addiction. Um, you know, that's just my story and how I got free from that. Obviously there's, you know, there's sex addiction therapists out there, there's counsellors. Um, but for me, you know, God just showed me how harmful the pornography was. And, and yeah, when I cried out to him, he just, you know, just set me free. Uh, and now I'm just flourishing in my, in my relationships. I'm married, I've got four children and, and that wouldn't, that definitely wouldn't be possible if if I hadn't got free from, from that, that porn addiction. There was two stages. There was getting born again, but then there was, like it says in Romans 12, do not conform to this world's thinking. Instead, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will know God's will, which is good, pleasing and perfect. And when I started to do that, when I started to renew my mind with what God says and God's word, that's when, that's when I started to change from the inside out. So I think sometimes... Um, it may be that people don't get the right information, especially when they first become a Christian. They think, well, they expect that they invite Jesus into heart and all of a sudden that, that God's going to just, just change everything. Um, and it doesn't work like that. We've got to renew our minds, like it says in Romans 12 too. Um, but yeah, I mean, from what I know now, especially about um, addictions um, and how, especially with porn addiction, how scientists have discovered over the last sort of 10 to 15 years that that when you watch pornography the same chemicals are released in the brain as when you watch uh, sorry as when you take heroin or cocaine um and it has and it, and it, it is as addictive as those drugs which for me growing up obviously that information wasn't there so nobody would ever tell me do you know that you could get addicted to this and and, and you know it could affect your, your behavior as well so so knowing what I know now, I, I, it makes sense that, that I couldn't stop. But yeah, certainly when I cried out to God and I'm just so grateful that, that um, he was able to help me to stop. And it's not, that, it's not that temptation wasn't there anymore. Temptation will always be, be there, especially when it comes to um, sexual sin because we live in a very sexualized world where you only have to switch on MTV and there's music videos on there that 20, 30 years ago would have been X-rated they wouldn't have been allowed to be shown until after a certain time, but now um, they, you can you can access that any time. And obviously, I mean, with if, the if we look at 
if we look at the state of the, the pop the music industry right now, we see some of the young artists as well who are performing and, and they're hardly wearing anything, Andy. And I've got a little daughter aged eight years old and, and I don't, honestly, I don't like to see her to look for her to see this kind of thing because it'll give her ideas to dress like that in that sort of way. And I guess when you've got um, an addiction, like a porn pornography addiction or any other addiction, I guess the things, some things like social media or the internet, online content, it's making it accessible also for young children. They can easily go on their computers or their tablets and make a search and they can find all this content available for them. What do we need to be doing? How do we, how do we monetize this, Sandy? Yeah, that's a good question, Cyrus. I've got, got four children myself. I've got three daughters. Um, my daughters are 10, six and three, and my, my son's nine. So I get what you're saying. And, and I think I, as same as you, Cyrus, I do feel uncomfortable when the music channels are on and, and some of the some of the more explicit videos that are on there. And I do turn them off because I don't want my, especially my daughters seeing that, um, because that's gonna, that, that obviously is gonna influence them, um, how they dress. How they act, um, but I think it's, we've just got to be as parents. We've just got to be really wise and really switched on, especially when it comes to internet access and social media. You know, I know, you know, there's especially my eldest daughter who's ten. Um, some of her friends have had mobile phones for the last few years, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know how, how how much their parents know about what can be accessed on the internet whether they've got protection but I think we've just got to we've just got to really educate ourselves and make sure that we're you know we've got we've got internet protection so that our kids can't just access porn because as I'm sure a lot of the viewers will know don't need me to, to, to tell people how easily access pornography now is on the internet and some of the some of the content and some of the explicit material that's on there um, and I just yeah it just it really makes me feel sick to think that you know kids as young as 10 even younger uh, are, are being exposed to this What sort of advice would you give to any of the parents who are watching us today, and how do they deal with this this subject with their young people, with their young children from eight, nine, ten, eleven years old, teenage years? How does a it's, it seems quite awkward, really, as a parent to to approach their child and talk about this subject with them? What sort of advice would you give to to the parents to approach this? Yeah, I think again, knowledge. Um, there's another website, uh, the Naked Truth Projects, that I've done some work with recently that go out and speak in schools for parents. I think you've just got to be open and honest with your kids. Uh, my lad's nine, my daughter's ten, and only a couple of months ago I spoke to them about pornography um, and just, just gave them, you know, told them what it is um, because I know um, they may be at school 
their friends have got mobile phones, if it comes up on their phone and they're looking at it, I want them to know what it is mm. so that they're in a better position to say, no, do you know what? My dad's told me what that is probably about a year ago when my daughter was, eldest daughter was nine, the youngest daughter, my uh, son was eight. We spoke to him about sex. You know, just a simple question, do you know what sex is? And just try to do it in a very relaxed, informal uh, way, not sort of a sit down, I'm going to talk to you about sex. Mm. Just asking them, what is it? Do you know what it is? Um, and I know especially my lad was, um, you know, he was squirming, he was putting his, he was putting the cushion over his face. He really didn't want me to to have this conversation. Yeah. Um, so it, 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 is, it is difficult, but I think if we just do it in a relaxed way, um, and not make it feel like um, it's too formal for them, um, and obviously make it age appropriate, um, you know, um, for, for for the kids. But yeah, it's, it's difficult, and and I wasn't looking forward to having that conversation. And and I go out in schools and speak speak to uh, high school kids about uh, porn addiction, uh, about pornography, and I found it really tough to speak to my young kids. When you go out to these schools, Andy, you're talking to them about the porn addiction. What is their reaction? Do they do, do they put their hands up and say, yeah, that's me? Or do, do you just give the opportunity to go out, give the speech? You don't expect anyone to, because it might be an embarrassment for those children as well, no? I give them an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the sessions. And, uh, and as you can imagine, there's not that many questions that you get because they don't because they feel embarrassed and a bit awkward, they're a bit reluctant to stick their hand up and ask a question. But, yeah. you know, I've had people come to me after. I've had, you know, 15-year-old lads come up to me and say, you know, I'm watching pornography for half an hour a day. Do you think it's a problem? Um, you know, and that's that's just a handful, and, and I'm sure there's many more that, 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 are, that are like that and experiencing that. Um, and, and a lot of the time, I think kids watch it out of curiosity, uh, boredom. I've had you know people say you know I watch I watch it regularly just from out of boredom. They don't realise that the impacts that it's having on the brain and that they're slowly getting addicted. Tell us a little bit about your website, Andy. You've got a website called PornOnTheBrain.org. Um, yeah. Tell us a bit about your website and your organisation. Yeah, so I set up Porn on the Brain um, initially to get the message out about what I'm doing in schools, but not just schools, I speak in churches, I've spoke to sports clubs, um, and just, just educating, it's mainly educating them on the harmful effects of pornography, because I think still in society now, um, people don't know um, how harmful it can be, and, and I think there's still that attitude that it's just harmless fun, what's wrong with it, everybody watches it, which is, you know, which, which I'm just trying to change people's attitudes towards that, so I set that website up so that um, people know about what I'm doing. There's also some useful information on there, some facts about pornography, about you know youth and uh, some of the stats about how much youth um, are watching pornography. Because again, a lot of people don't realise the biggest group of internet porn users is the 12 to 17 age group. Wow. Uh, wow. Which again, for most people, when they hear that, it's quite shocking. But but that's the truth. Um, and like I said earlier, the average age that a child first views pornography is 11 years old. So I think for most parents that are probably not aware of that, um, would maybe think twice about buying their, their child a mobile phone where they've got internet access on there. Um, you know, for me, I've told you my story, and I had to rummage around and find um, D, uh, VHS videos. Nowadays, a couple of clicks on the mobile phone. And is, it really, is it really that easy to come across... Um, this kind of material online? Is it just the case of someone going online and doing a little search and they'll find those results? Or are there any yeah. filters in place? I mean, are, are Google and any other search engines, are they doing anything? Or is it just easy, you just go on, type a, question, type a word and you've got all the things you need to see? I think it all depends on um, the filters that are, that are on, that have been set up and the, the protection that have been set up on, on whatever device it is, whether it's a laptop or a mobile phone. But I know through doing some work with the Naked Truth Project in Manchester, that they're, they're doing a lot of work and trying to um, get the government to, to put these filters in place so, that, so they, they, that they need to be 18 and they need to show that they're 18 before they can access some of this material. So, so good work, is some real good work's being done in that area, which is great, but I think more needs to be done. Um, in, in that area and the government, I think, have got a responsibility as well to make sure that you know, kids can't access um, this sort of material. Um, 
So, yeah, the, the, there's some good work going on, which Excellent. I'm glad about. So, Andy, tell me, what are your plans for the future? What's ahead for you? Yeah, I'm just, I've, I've got my own business, which I've been going for six years, uh, born again, sports therapy, um, which is going great. But also, I've obviously started doing the, the porn on the brain and the talks in schools. I'm actually speaking in a sixth form college in Leeds next week. Um, which I spoke at a couple of months ago and they've invited me to come back. So I'm hoping to do more um, with that and, and just raise that awareness of the harmful effects of pornography. And um, So, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Forward Brilliant. To and for any of the viewers who are watching us today and maybe they're, in, they're not a Christian or maybe they're a new Christian and they're hearing about Christ for the very first time in their life, how can what would you advise them in in the way to re, to build a relationship with Christ? What would you say to them? Yeah, I think like I said earlier, Romans twelve two is a great scripture. Um, Do not conform to this world's thinking, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. And I know for me personally, that's when I started to change from the inside out. Is when I started to renew my mind. What does God say about this? What does God say about that? Um, and because up to that point. I just I just gone with what the world said, um, and the world tells us, you know, pornography is okay, sex is fine. Um, obviously, in the context of marriage and and all that sort of stuff, I'm not I'm not anti-sex, um, but yeah. So I think it's about renewing the renewing our minds, especially if you're a new Christian. Um, getting to a good church as well, I think, is really important. Something I've been blessed and fortunate. To, to you know, found a great church, um, Life Church in Bradford, where I go. Um, so yeah, and also I, you know, got into a life group as well through church. So all these things, um, uh, things that we can actively do as as a Christian, and especially for new believers, to help grow our faith, um, because they're, they're their places you can ask questions, because we've all got questions um, about God, about Jesus. Um, so yeah, that would that's the advice I'd give. Well, Andy, we've come towards the end of today's interview. That's Andy Kirk, professional rugby player for the Leeds Rhinos. Andy, thank you so much indeed for joining us today. Take care, brother. Thank you, Cyrus. God bless you. God bless. Bye.